Welcome to Module 2. In this module, we will be giving you an introduction to events and tracker programs in DHIS2, describing their background, development, key features, and benefits of using these models. This overview will be separated into three parts, as you can see in this outline here. We will start by reviewing the aggregate data model so we can compare this to the event and tracker data model. In part two, we will discuss event and tracker program development, as well as some key features that are used in event programs. In part three, we will go over the apps that are used to collect and analyze data and some of the key benefits of the event model. With this in mind, let's get started. Let's start with the aggregate model in DHIS2. DHIS2 started off as a way to collect public health information in the 90s. Traditionally, the collected data were aggregated. The numbers would often be a result of manual counting in paper files put into a data collection form and then submitted into DHIS2 to be aggregated, analyzed, and used for reports. To give you an example of the aggregate data flow, the data are often held in a register book or line list, similar to this cholera outbreak monitoring line list, which includes individual level information on patients and the services provided to them. From the register book or line list, the data are aggregated or tallied to a data collection form similar to the data collection form shown here. This is the data that we eventually analyze in the form of reports, graphs, tables, etc. We can note some challenges associated with collecting and using aggregated data. A major drawback is loss of information. For example, only being able to view data on specific predefined age groups rather than any potential age. It also makes tracking individuals through a treatment course difficult. A great example of this is comparing vaccination data. In an aggregate system, we can calculate vaccine coverage, but we are unable to track a single child through their vaccination schedule, ensuring they are fully immunized. With these challenges in mind, a lot of institutions have been requesting a more detailed data model. That request has translated into a lot of improvements in the events and tracker module in DHIS2. This module is meant to fill the gaps of the aggregated data model and allow for individual level tracking or collection of anonymous event-based data. A lot of the times we talk about tracking an individual that we are providing services to, but it's important to note here that we are tracking an entity, which means it doesn't have to be a person. It could be a commodity, for example, stock of ready-to-use therapeutic food in a nutrition program, or insecticide-treated bed nets that are distributed through an antenatal care program. The event and tracker models are best utilized as a basic transactional system. While it can track similar service information like an electronic medical record system does, it's generally used to track only certain programs or events that are predefined and not necessarily all services provided to the individual. There are two types of individual-based data models available in DHIS2 that we have been referring to already in this overview, event programs and tracker programs. Event programs are anonymous, individual events where no person or entity is tracked. For example, survey data, a surveillance line listing, 
or a facility needs assessment like this service availability and readiness assessment developed by WHO. We will be referring to this facility assessment later in the course as an example of an event program. Tracker programs are the second individual-based data model. This is where a unique entity is tracked. This often means a person, for example, following a child through their immunization schedule by entering their details and identifying which vaccines they have received during each individual visit. The tracker model is not limited to tracking people, however. Other entities, such as geographical areas, lab samples, or fridges, could all be examples of items that could be tracked. To summarize, the key difference between the two models is that tracker, as the name implies, involves the registration and tracking of a unique entity across multiple services and visits, whereas the event model allows for collection of individual level data without the ability to uniquely track this information. This course will focus on event programs, but will introduce some basics of tracker programs as well and describe a few examples. In the next section of this introduction, we will continue with discussing the development and key features. Feel free to move on to the next part of the module when you are ready.